Hey guys, and welcome back to the Yes Means Yes podcast. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Title IX with Auburn University's um, Title IX member, Ms. Kelly Taylor. As usual, my name is Faith Namshev, and I'm the prevention educator with Rape Counselors, and I'm going to let everyone else kind of introduce themselves. Hey guys, my name is Amanda Carpenter, and I'm the Victim Services Program Coordinator here at Rape Counselors of East Alabama. Hi, I'm Kelly Taylor. I work at Auburn University where I'm the director of the Affirmative Action EEO and Title IX office. So I serve as the university's Title IX coordinator. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kelly. Um, We're really excited to talk about Title IX. I think um, with all of the crazy new things that are happening (laughs) and bad, um, I think it's good for us to get like a refresher on it all. And anyone who's listening doesn't even know what Title IX is. So to start us off, Kelly, what, Ms. Taylor, what is Title IX? Well, I won't give you the whole history. I, I'll start by saying it passed in 1972 as just a, a simple paragraph, a piece of legislation that said no one can be discriminated against in education based on sex. So that's, a, that's, a, that's not the exact quote, but that's good enough. And from that, over the years, um, the Department of Education and um, regulators, presidents, Congress, lots of people have added and added and added the regulations around it so that it's highly regulated now, um, much more than some school-based, um, you know, regulations. So anyway, um, so it came to include, first it was a lot about athletics and, you know, like making sure you had enough, a fair dis- distribution of women's teams and men's teams. And then it kind of moved toward um, sexual harassment. Um, and then from sexual harassment, it moved toward if sexual harassment is a violation of Title IX, then sexual assault is, a, is sexual harassment, and that's a violation of Title IX. And so that's how we kind of got to where we are now, so that it's primarily about sexual harassment and sexual assault. Some about athletics, too, of course. So within the program, what is your role? What do you do? So I am the coordinator for the university. So I manage a staff of investigators. Um, We are responsible for ensuring that the campus is educated on what Title IX is, what their obligations are as mandatory reporters for employees, not students. Um, um, you know, victims, and then also being an investigative office where we do fact-finding if someone brings a complaint forward. So we kind of have a lot of little things going on with Title IX. Okay, um, so Ms. Taylor, would you say that are all Title IX programs different? Well, they probably have little bits of things that are different, but they all, everybody has to follow the same regulations. And the regulations have gotten super specific lately to the point last year there was an update to the regulations that even tells us stuff that this is how minute. When you share with the victim and the respondent, the information that you've gathered, they have to have 10 working days to respond. I mean, that's how specific the regulations are. So I would say that they're different in that everybody does their own uh, kind of training. Everybody does their own um, handouts and flyers and um, things like that. But there are a, a number of things that are highly regulated that everybody should be doing. So, is Title IX only a program that is in colleges? No, no. It applies to any educational institution that receives federal funds, and frankly, that includes most K-12 schools. 
um, because they get like even if you if they accept money for the free lunch program or the discounted lunch program that would count any kind of federal funding at all if and it doesn't have to be title nine related funding so um you know any funding from the federal government automatically makes that school k-12 college university um responsible for complying with title nine and eligible for um being investigated if they mess up and that kind of thing so i think k-12 schools all have their own title nine coordinators too okay they should mm -hmm. i was about to say i know that it was like a shock to me uh, a couple years ago i was doing like research for a presentation and i was like oh k-12 schools have title nine regulations i had no yes mm -hmm. um so more specifically and i know this one is kind of more aimed towards what you do as a college um title nine coordinator how right the title nine office how is that able to help victims of sexual violence well, um, first of all, I think we have resources that we can offer that even, um, you know, great organizations like yours um, can't offer. For instance, um, as a university administrator, um, my assistant director and I have the authority to issue a no contact order between two members of the campus community. So if two students, um, it, you know, if some, and one student alleges something about another student and they ask for a no contact order, we have the authority to write mutual no contact orders. So that would go to both parties and say, you're not to call, text, post on social media to this person, you know, um, get a third party to speak on your behalf to this person, just, you know, basically ignore each other. And that's been something that helps a lot where people are, you know, frightened or um, that kind of thing, you know. Um, so we can do that. Resources, um, both on campus and off, we, Keep, we keep track of resources like Rape Councils of East Alabama, um, Safe Harbor on campus. Um, we can help them get priority placement in the Student Counseling Center. So if they need counseling and they don't want to go to a private counselor, but they want to go to student counseling on campus, which of course is free to them, um, we can help get them in more quickly. Um, just a lot of different kinds of things like that. And then we can also describe the process that's available through our office if they're looking for, um, you know, some kind of way to have accountability of the other party. So some people just want a no contact order and that's all they want. And you know, we don't force them to do anything other than that. But some people very much want accountability. And we offer a process that has investigation, resolutions, and can result in punishment. Now, of course, it's school punishment, so it's not like jail. It's things like suspensions, expulsions um, for lesser kinds of harassment it might be something like um you know uh you know writing a paper about title nine or you know it, it, we get creative with it um but anyway it can be all kinds of you know various school type um accountability so so what, what, what rights do the victims have under Title IX? Well, they have the right to choose whether or not they want to take advantage of our office. In other words, we have a regulatory obligation to reach out to them if when we learn that something might have happened to them. 
but they don't I always tell people please don't think that I'm gonna call someone up and say you must meet me in my office I would never do that never um, so they have the right to choose whether or not they want to learn about our process sometimes they want to come in and talk and just learn what is it can we do what's the process look like when we go through the process but they don't necessarily want to do anything that's entirely their right um, they have a right to certain support services even if they don't want to file a formal complaint and go through the process of an investigation so they can still get like the no contact order or um, assistance with their teachers you know like there's a way that we can write their teachers we don't tell what's going on exactly you know we're pretty um very much um discreet about what we say but we write the teachers and ask for leniency with respect to you know they might be late they might miss some classes and that kind of thing and the teachers here have always been very responsive to that so we can do those kinds of things without going through the complaint process so they have a lot of rights um you know they have a right to if they want to go through the process they have a right to have an advisor and bring somebody with them to every meeting they have with us including the first one you know so um they have a lot of rights really so i know that you mentioned um an investigative process through title nine mm -hmm. how is the title nine investigative process different say a survivor reporting to law enforcement and going through that like entire criminal process okay that's a great question um first of all it's important to know because we always tell students this you don't have to choose both you don't have to choose one or the other and you can choose neither uh, it's completely up to that victim so um our process um, in some ways is similar but in many ways is very different um, when you go to the criminal process it has to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt which is a very high legal standard um, the title IX process in a school um, you can you at our school i'll put it this way at our university we use the more likely than not standard so that means it's it's less difficult to establish whether or not something happened um i don't know what i, I haven't been through a criminal process it's very difficult um and you know um it's long and drawn out and while ours is not swift to the point of because of the regulations now ours does go on for several weeks if not a month or two but it's not a year or two either you know what i mean so um i know that the criminal process can be quite long depending on <laughs> Y'all are both nodding, so I take it you know. Um, yeah, it can be quite long. Um, but that difference in the evidentiary standard, more likely than not, as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt, is a real benefit to our process. Now, of course, the worst thing we can do to a student who is found responsible is, you know, to kick them out of school so it's not like you know somebody may feel very strongly this person needs to be held in jail and we can't do that because all we have the remedies available to us are you know school remedies but still um i do think there are differences and similarities but mostly differences thank you we kind of get that like question a lot like how is it different why should i report to title nine versus reporting to the police so i really think that 
um, that lower burden of proof stand. Yes. So beneficial victims when there's sadly so often that little physical concrete evidence that they want in criminal trials. Right. And, you know, we, we don't have to follow the same evidentiary rules in terms of, you know, hearsay, you know, I, all of the legal things that um, would be thrown out of a legal process. We have a less strict, we have less strict guidelines. So if, for instance, um, nobody was in the room, but, but the victim and the respondent at the time that the assault occurred, but right after that victim called her best friend and sobbed on the phone um, and told her what happened, we can we can interview that best friend as a vic as a witness. Whereas I think in a court case you can't do that because they weren't there, right? So that's, I think that's right. I think that's right. I know that it is, it, it, I know we can, and I don't know for sure about court, but uh, we just have more, I think we have a little bit more um, leeway. I think, you know, a lot of times when people hear the words, you know, Title Nine. Um, we hope that this podcast will help people know that it's a resource and yes. it's, a, it's a good word to hear, not a bad word to hear. Um, because I know a lot of people are like, Title IX, what is that? That sounds like really serious, but mm -hmm. it's important, I think, and that's why we hope that this podcast will really help people realize that, you know, it's a resource. It's there to help you and, and it's on your side. It's not against you. I hope um, that comes out of this too. I really do, Amanda. I want people to know they can come and just ask questions, you know, and, and not be committed to anything, mm -hmm. you know? Because they, they already feel like, you know, they've lost that control and so they want to give them that control back. So with that being said, so what advice um, would you give to someone that was thinking about reporting, you know, their assault to Title IX. What is something that you would like to, to tell them or advice you would want to give them? Well, I guess I'd say, you know, we, we can help you understand resources available, um, support services available, remedies and accountability options without making you do anything um, we can just explain things um, and there are things we can do that are supportive and helpful that can be done without somebody moving forward with an investigation like the no contact order like the teachers like the you know stu student counseling those kinds of things we can still do for someone even if they say, I don't want to do an investigation, I don't have it in me right now to go through with it. The other thing that's nice is, as long as you're a student, you know, um, we don't have a statute of limitations. As long as a person is a member of the campus community, they can report. And if the other person is a member of the campus community and they want to move forward with an investigation, we can do that. So, that's, that's a plus as well. I know in the criminal cases, you have to make up your mind in a certain number of months, and then that's that. Um, we actually um, one time investigated a case that was 20 years old. Um, the respondent still worked here, and the former student um, had saved emails that were incriminating. So um, we were able to investigate that one, even though it's 20 years old. So I'm not saying we do that all the time, but clearly, but um, we just have some freedoms with respect to that. 
you know, and I also think it's good too that like, you know, if they do go, um, you know, the, the process of going through the police department that, you know, sometimes they'll go through the process and then let's just say we get to grand jury and it's, you know, no build. Um, a lot of the time, you know, our survivors will just be like, what do I do now? And kind of give up. But that's where you guys also, they could always go to you guys and they're like, okay, well, I'm a student here, but these are things that I really want to happen. I don't want to have to come in contact with this person. So y'all also are able to, you know, do things that, you know, they're on campus that, you know, they don't need to give up. There's, there's always, you know, right. y'all are like a, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say a backup plan, but you're there as a resource. So they are. So and that's always a very positive, you know, because I know when I first started at RCEA, um, we went to court and I remember seeing Title IX from Auburn come through to the trial. And I just remember yeah. thinking, wow, you know, that's really impressive. And that's a village like, you know, yeah. you guys were there supporting. So, um, so that's really cool that, you know, you come together as a community. And I love the fact that we work with Safe Harbor. Um, I do like, too. You know, we tell our survivors, there's a lot we can do for you, but there's also some things that our hands are just tied and we can't do. And that's why it's useful to have someone like Safe Harbor because, you know, they can help or you guys can help with, you know, class assignments and talking to their professors, things mm -hmm. that we don't have control over, but we can go and help them during the interview process when they're being interviewed by the police. So um, it's really neat to see how people can work together um, for one good goal, which is. And I do them. like your use of the word community because I do feel like a campus very much is a community. Absolutely. You know, it really is. Um, that's one thing that's really rewarding about working on a college campus. Right. Absolutely. And, um, just from what we've seen over the me and Amanda have seen the past couple of years working. It's far too common for a college student to experience sexual violence and then leave school because it's too painful or because they have continued advances or they just cannot bear to be around the perpetrator. So I think it's amazing that institutions like this exist so that they have that right to their education and that they can get those no contact orders um, and instances. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they can continue to focus on their education at the very least. And get help, you know, I mean, um, get free, licensed psychologist help. That's wonderful. Um, that's not available to people in the city, you know. So that's... Yes, we, we get a lot of referrals for people to want, you know, counseling. And so it's really nice when we do have from Auburn that we can say hey we've got a great resource it's different because in the community it, it can be quite expensive definitely <laughs> definitely so Miss Taylor we always like to ask a final question of our podcast guests what is your message to survivors I guess my message would be we're here for you um we are a resource. We are a place where you can get help, learn more, get accountability. It depends on what they want out of the process. But we are here. Please don't be afraid to come and bring a friend if you want to bring a friend or bring a, you know, um, a counselor or a whatever, you know. Don't be afraid to ask questions. To call me on the phone and say, I just want to ask you some questions. I want to know what my rights are. That's fine too. We are a resource for um, victims and in many, many ways. So I hope they won't be afraid to explore and to learn what we can do for them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been super informative and 
Um, I hope anyone listening was able to kind of get some more information about Title IX because I feel like no one really understands exactly all that they do, especially the yeah. Office specific one um but we appreciate your time and speaking with you and um that's all we have thank you guys and we will see you on the next podcast bye thank Thank you you. bye